Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm joined by Police Commissioner Ray Kelly, District Attorney Cy Vance Jr., uh, NYPD Chief of the Department uh, Joe Esposito, the NYPD's Chief of Organized Crime Control Anthony Izzo, and John Pineblatt, my Criminal Justice Coordinator. Um, Commissioner Kelly will introduce other members of the NYPD who are also present, but uh, I just wanted to say that today we're announcing the results of an undercover investigation that has broken up a major gun running operation, one that flouted the law in acquiring guns out of state and then broke the law again by reselling those guns here. Uh, you can get a better illustration of the uh, problem of illegal guns from what you see before me on this table. There's an awful lot of firepower here weapons. Uh, more than a hundred weapons, as a matter of fact, including the makes and models of guns commonly used in violent crimes in our city. Now, they haven't all been traced yet, but we know that many, if not most, were purchased in South Carolina and then found their way here. And many were in the hands of teenagers before the NYPD engaged in the very dangerous business of making the undercover gun purchases that got these weapons off the streets. We should all remember that New York today is the safest big city in the nation, and we're continuing to make our city even safer. Shooting incidents are down this year compared with last, and with only 11 weeks remaining in 2012, we've had fewer than 330 murders in this city, an 18% decline from a year ago. In fact, New York's murder rate is a fraction of that of many other major cities. Consider this. If Chicago, if we had Chicago's murder rate, we would have 830 more New Yorkers that have been murdered in our city so far. 830 more. Add that to 330. Uh, that's 1,160 murders we would have had instead of 330. Or if we had Philadelphia's rate, uh, we would have had more than 1,000 new murders in addition to the 330. It would have been something like 1,350 murders. Or if we had Baltimore's murder rate, we'd have more, nearly 1,900 more murders, 1,900 more New Yorkers would have been killed than have been killed so far. Nevertheless, I think we all agree that one murder is one murder too many. And when, as happened in recent months, children at play died because of gunplay around them, our determination to stop such violence becomes even stronger. And that's why we employ every tool available to us, including legislation, litigation, and enforcement to take illegal weapons out of the the hands of those who should not possess them and get them off of our streets. The city has, for example, sued 27 out-of-state gun dealers who've been big sources of crime guns recovered in our city. 24 of those dealers have either settled or defaulted and have been put under three-year court monitorships. The result, research has shown that the chance that the NYPD will recover a gun sold by one of those dealers has dropped nearly 84%. So it clearly works. And you clearly can measure. And investigations like this one that we're talking about today are critically, critically important as well. In a few minutes, Commissioner Kelly and District Attorney Vance will describe the investigation in more detail. But before they do, let me just add this. Yesterday, a number of us here, including Commissioner Kelly, were at the police wall, uh, police memorial wall in Battery Park City. It honors the officers who have given their lives protecting our city. An officer whose name added to the wall yesterday was Detective Peter Vagaski, who was killed last December by a robber armed with an illegal handgun. Seeing these weapons that have been seized by the NYPD, I think gives me more hope that the lives of other police officers, as well as the lives of every New Yorkers, uh, may have been saved as a result. And for that reason, I believe every New Yorker in every part of our city owes a debt of thanks to those involved in this investigation particularly the officers who risk their own lives by going undercover to make the criminal cases that the commissioner and the district attorney will describe. And we can't thank those officers in person today, obviously, doing that would put them in jeopardy. But we can say that their skill, determination, and bravery once again demonstrate why we call the officers of the NYPD our finest. So on that note, let me turn things over to Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you see over here on the right, uh, members of our Fire Around Suppression Division, uh, they did a great uh, job on this case, and we'll talk more about uh, who specifically is involved in a moment. Over the last 24 hours, 
New York City detectives have executed nine search warrants and arrested 13 suspects in East Harlem. Uh, three others are still at large. The suspects were responsible for the illegal sale of 129 guns. You see 100 of them displayed here. The, they include everything from an AK-47 assault rifle purchased by an undercover officer for $1,600 to a 32 caliber Smith & Weston handgun uh, that was purchased for $400. These are the fruits of two related investigations. One of them, called Mickey Mouse Trap, began in May of last year and focused on a career criminal, Mitchell Mickey Collins, age 64 who's been involved with illegal guns one way or another for his entire adult life. He and three other suspects in this case sold a total of 88 firearms to undercover officers. While the tracing of these guns is still underway, we believe that the subjects purchased them mostly from pawn shops and other gun dealers in South Carolina. They resold them on the streets of Harlem for a quick 100% profit. Some of the guns were reported stolen, but those may be bogus reports to cover the fact that they were transferred illegally through the straw purchases. In Operation Carver, which began last November, the suspects were much younger, but no less dangerous to the public, and lived in and around uh, East Harlem's Carver house, public house. They sold 41 guns and a bullet-resistant vest to an undercover officer over the last year. Two of the guns purchased by the undercover officer were used in shootings. One in the Bronx in 2003 and the other in Brooklyn last year in a gunfight in Cypress House. Those are the two handguns right here. <clears throat> the victims in each case refused to cooperate. The call of investigation illustrates that the guns have been in circulation in the city for some time, and were periodically sold by crew members looking to make money on the used gun. The crews were groups of young men who named themselves the East River Army, Six Net, Crew a Day, and Total Money Gang, or TMG as they call themselves. Like Mickey Collins, the crew members also sold their guns at about twice the legitimate sticker price. The crew members ranging in age from 17 to 23, had prior arrests for a range of offenses, including attempted murder, weapon possession, assault, drugs, larceny, and trespassing. In each operation, detectives learned that guns were being sold illegally on the street. Then an undercover officer from a firearms investigation unit was assigned to gain the confidence of the sellers. Getting close to the wily Mickey Collins was no easy matter. He waited for months before agreeing to meet with the undercover officer, and even longer before he would agree to sell him more than one gun at a time. He appeared to be waiting to see if the police were tracking his initial gun sales. Collins, who will be eligible for Social Security next year, actually next month, uh, has an arrest history that dates to 19. 68, when he was charged with possession of a loaded firearm. In the four decades since then, he's been in prison for attempted murder, weapons possession, and drug sale. One of his younger associates, Samson Taylor, age 34, has six prior arrests, including one for robbery. Taylor would take a bus to South Carolina and buy guns there at Collins' behest. It's unusual to see individuals as old as Mickey Collins still engaged in criminal activity. Regrettably, it's not unusual for young men to get involved in violent street crews. We estimate that citywide, crews are responsible for about 30% of the shootings in New York City. Fortunately, as the mayor indicated, both shootings and murders are down, and we are on track to establish a new record mode for murders this year. We've accomplished this through proactive policing strategies like Operation Impact. Now, through Operation Kruka, aimed at the loosely affiliated groups like those selling guns in this case, we hope to make the city even safer.
I want to commend the work of our firearms investigation unit for their outstanding efforts in this case, particularly Deputy Inspector John Burke, who is the commanding officer of the Firearms Protection Division. Um, we have Captain Robert Van Houten, who is the executive officer. Uh, we have, in this case, we have the, the case detective responsible for this investigation, that's Detective Richard Ortiz and Douglas Lansing. They clean up for that. And I also want to commend someone, of course, who we can only identify as Detective Betts for the dangerous undercover work that made this case possible. And of course, I also want to thank District Attorney Vance and his outstanding team of prosecutors who have been our close partners in this case and, and so many others. Finally, I want to point out uh, that police officers involved in a shooting last evening in Brooklyn narrowly escaped injury when an armed felon with prior arrest for assault here and in Pennsylvania actually fired two shots at them last night at close range with an illegal 9 millimeter handgun. As in so many cases, this crime gun was purchased out of state. This time, it was purchased in North Carolina. Mr. Mayor? Brand new. I was in London a couple days ago, and I can just tell you that the subject that kept coming up, no matter who I talked with, was how does New York maintain the streets so safe because the streets in London are no longer as safe as they used to be. We have the safest streets of any major city in America. And one of the most fundamental civil rights is to be able to walk down the street without looking over your shoulder and wondering whether you're going to get home safe and sound. If we don't have low crime, we're not going to have an economy, but we're certainly not going to also have a civilization, not one that America can be proud of. We've done a wonderful job here, but it's a constant battle. And I wanted to, and just on behalf of my family and everybody that I represent, thank the NYPD and the district attorney's office for all that they do keep this city safe. We just, it's a battle that we're going to have to keep fighting, and we need as much help from everybody as we can get. 